I was born here in Abu Dhabi. I was raised in my grandfather's house. It's uh, it's an area between um, Abu Dhabi and Al Ain. It's called Benias. It's a small residential area. Um, most of the people there know each other. It's, a, it's very very well connected. All our neighbors were people who share the same family name with us. One thing I remember about like growing up in my grandfather's house is that um, there was a lot of storytelling. Like every night I would go and crawl in my grandfather's bed. I sleep next to him and he would tell me a story. When I first thought about writing, the first thing I wanted to write about is a house that had three different generations because that's the house I lived in. I went to a scientific high school, so when I came here, I had the sciences in my mind. I was testing the waters, I was telling my family, oh, what do you think if I take a theater class? And then they were like, yeah, just take it for fun. So for a very long time, I was studying theater classes, but I didn't tell my family until I finished most of the requirements and then I told them I major in theater. They're happy now, they're accepting of it. I'm a native New Yorker. I've made theater and performance, classical, new plays, uh, musicals, performance art uh, in off-Broadway and American regional theater as well as internationally for decades. I would get into my classroom and the student population is completely different than any student population anywhere. Both because they're coming from different places with different um, uh, cultures of learning as well as cultures of living, different ways, different they have, all have different paths to knowledge. But they're also not going to the same place. So the question moves. The question is not training them for a destination in the field, but the question becomes what is theater? You know, teaching here helps me reimagine the field, actually, uh, and, and my own work processes. And that's really what Al, Al Hill came out of, is uh, thinking about what a piece of work might be that was really made from the consciousness of this place. One week before the last week of classes, I went to her and I told her I have, I've been writing for a while and I want to try directing um, the text I've written. She came in and it was performed in English and Arabic with three of her friends that she'd gone to high school with. So they weren't students that I knew who were performing it. They weren't in the culture of the class and they just swept in and began this system of moving lights around on the floor and moving tables around and moving props in and out for these three monologues, one about being a child, one about being an adult woman, and one about being an older woman. And Reem told me later that a lot of what I really liked about the piece had been a mistake. You know, I experienced these really beautiful holds where they just stopped. And she said they all forgot their lines. They were quiet and still, and in performance, it's unbelievably muscular and bold to just stop and stand there. And then I kept thinking about it, and I went to her at the end of the following semester, and I said, look, what do you think if we develop this? You have a voice, I have a voice. Our voices will be next to each other, and we'll make a new work that is a collaboration. The title of the play is Rahil, which translates to the leaving or departure. And the scenes of the play represent different moments in life where we leave, or us leaving childhood, or us leaving um, certainty, or us leaving a home, like the last scene. You know, I was a 22-year-old woman, and I was mad about the same things. I mean, they were framed differently, but that's what it is. You go from being a teenager into being an adult woman and people expect you to do it a certain way and you don't and you're mad and you write poetry about it. But the, what's universal about the piece is feeling misunderstood and being desirous of something you don't have access to. Throughout our conversations as a cast, we were talking about stories that happened to us or like how, things that happened within our families and then there were scenes that, I, that we were wondering how our families would react to them. I saw them having chips. On the break they would sit and have chips and it could go on for half an hour and they would naturally, if I let it, and they would naturally speak in a mix of English and Arabic. The poems are very formal and when they weren't in the formal they would fall into multiple dialects and and it was so alive. It was clearly the companion to the, the poetry. 
people who are bilingual in English and Arabic saw one show. People who speak English saw another show. And people who spoke Arabic only saw another show. So the performance always felt like a kind of gathering place of perspective. Like one of the things I was aiming would happen with the play is that people would connect and then what they see will kind of remind them of things they lived, but at the same time would let them reflect and see the similarities and differences between what's on stage and what they have.